Hey, look, we've been talking about this new statistic that Justin came out where they're saying that pedestrians, black people, are 56% more likely to be hit or involved in a fatal incident in Milwaukee County, even though we make up 26% of the population. We go ahead to the lines. Miss Nikki, you're on the new 1017 The Truth. Tap in. Good afternoon, Tori, and thank you so much for taking my call. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention about the driver's ed program, and if, if I'm correct, Tori, I believe um, driver's ed was taken out of, the, out of the Milwaukee Public Schools maybe it has to be well over 10 years ago because mm-hmm. I'm thinking – it's been gone since my daughters were in high school and they're in their thirties. Mm. Now, one thing that I do know is is that when they took the program out of the high school, they did place driver's ed um, programs inside of community based organizations um, like those that service the youth, because that's where my daughter actually went right. and got her driver's ed for free. What I think is the I think that we're dealing with right now, Tori, is 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 an issue because um, that to me that strategy made a lot of sense. The one thing that I know for a fact is that before the kids can actually get into driver's ed, they have to participate in programs at the, at the community-based organization. Again, that made sense. I think the problem is, is that when those organizations were um, offering programs that the kids were no longer interested in, right, they, they no longer could use that driver's ed as almost like an incentive for them to participate so a lot of kids started to just, instead of really wanting the driver's ed, I, I really do believe they went out and just started driving on their own because they didn't want to participate in programming. So I don't know how we fix this because, you know, once you drive without the proper instruction, you pick up some really bad driving habits. Right. Right. That's really, hard. it's really, really hard to break. And, and we see the bad driver driving habits. You see I the mean, people I'm leaning down watching. in the seat like they barely could see over, oh the, over the steering wheel. <laughs> barely could see. Or even understanding that when there's a solid line, right, in between the road that you don't cross, you can't, you know, so it's like those rules of the road that is basically missed when you don't have a proper education. Right. My fear is that if they want to continue to offer the driver's ed in this manner and use it as an incentive for kids to participate in programs that kids don't want to participate in, mm. this issue is going to get worse. Right. So you're saying in order but to get the driver's to- ed, you got to take this other class that we got to grant money for. Yes, and you had to do it. And a lot of our kids, a lot of those programs, at one point, like when my daughters were going in community-based organizations before that school program, they, it made sense. It was engaging. But some of those programs, honestly, mm. Tori, has been weathered. They're outdated. Kids don't engage them anymore. And too many of the youth service and agencies are not stopping and rethinking and retooling what right. they're doing the programs they're doing for the youth that make them want to come inside. I think sometimes they are okay with the kids staying outside, right? Because they're mm. still getting funded. So I'm wondering what is going to be the result of this. Is that only if, if we're talking about this this percentage of, of individuals that are causing the crashes are the youth, right? What do, how do we fix this now? How do we say, okay, stop driving and come let me teach you how to drive when they've been doing this all along? I think so I think that you got to reiterate it into the school system, like when because we did it. It I was too. part of class. It was like, yep, it, it was, was during the day. It was a part of class, and then that same yep. uh, driver's ed teacher was the one that was in the car with you. Yep, sure was. Yes, Tori. And so, so maybe that's going to have strategy. Hey, look, I mean, you you got to since they took driver's ed out of the schools. I mean, I see a rise in in like just bad driving. Yeah. So, yep. Hey. Because you had the education wasn't there. But yeah, I just want to know, like, what would be, I'm hoping that they just got to start with the youth. The, because I don't think once the people, with, once the people start leaning that, that seat back and taking two hands off the wheel, it's a wrap. Yeah, basically. So it's, we have to the teach the new, the new kids here. Right. So what do we do to get it back into the Milwaukee public schools? And that's the one thing that I, I would like to know. Like, what's that process? I have no problem. Maybe with, we have to take it to the school itself. board. Maybe we have to take these arguments take- to the school board uh, and then try I to work see. our way from there to let them know that this is what we want as a community. I agree. I agree. 
All right. Hey, look, Miss Nikki, I'm going I'm to see what, how can that happen or if that can happen. I'm going to call a few people and just to see, you know, a few legislators and see what can happen. And that'd be great. Tori, please keep us informed because I, I have no problem. I go to the school board meetings. I speak up. So I have no problem with being part of the community and helping with this initiative of moving it forward because I personally had two cousins that were hit and killed. Happened to be sisters at two mm. different times, right? Right. The street, so and I have multiple very- family members that have been struck and killed. Yeah, there you go. So, again, we want our kids, we want everybody to be safe. And and so whatever we can do, whatever I can do to help with the situation, I'm here. So I would love to hear what the process is going to be and what, what is the next call for action for this. All right. I'll 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 look into it and I'll try to get some information here soon, okay? Probably in the next two Thank days. You, God bless you, Miss Nikki. Uh, Draco, you're on the new one on one seven The Truth. Tap in. How you doing, Tori? Blessings, blessings. How you doing, Brother Draco? The uh, the guy that killed that lady over there on 23rd and Burleigh, he was 30 years old. Right. And 30 years old, so he's far from a, a, a And kid. they say he was on the most wanted so, list. Right. So and, and I would the, say the, that the, it's the not guy only, that it's killed not only, Amari in the police crash was 40 years old. 40 years a old. couple weeks ago so in the I, police chase. I, you know, it, Both it, of them kind of headed what's to a going police on chase. In the city, I think what's going on, in, well, I know what's going on in the city. It's, it's, it's mass psychosis spawned by uh, bad parenting, uh, certain types of drill music, and you see I said certain types. Mm-hmm. And there's certain types of drill music that make kids think they are or uninsured, unmature people uh, make uh, it gives them a false sense of uh, power, and when they're in a car, a lot of times they're listening to that music, thinking that they're invincible, thinking that they they're, they're in a dreamland when they're driving. I'm sitting looking at one right now. He's just bumping his head right now. No clue what's going on. I just I just had to speed up to follow him, and I just had to kind of prove my theory even more. To look at these these people. I mean, they don't have to always be 17, 16. This, this guy right here looks like he's about, like he's maybe like 40 years old. Mm. But he's got that deer in the head like look, mm. which means he's not, not all the way there. He's just bumping his music. He's, he's being uh, uh, manipulated by the music. Mm. Hey, look, I can tell you this. We, we got an issue. And, and the one thing we could do is we can demand things when they say it's 56 percent. We can say, hey, look, we want driver's education back in the schools uh, for the next generation. And I don't sometimes I don't know if you can save older people and things like that once they pick up them bad habits. And and I'm talking about even all around the county, not just in in, in, in the north side. I'm talking about when people get to drinking and driving and have full uh, drinking and driving uh, offenses. You know, they don't they usually have multiple uh, ideas of when it comes to reckless driving. That's why I say reckless driving ain't just, you know, what we picture a young. uh, When you talk about reckless driving, they think about Kia boys. It's older people getting into it. And it's people that's drinking that's uh, causing accidents, too. So let's just keep everybody in the conversation. But when we come back, we'll be joined on the lines by Justice Wisconsin Advocate and author Elizabeth Brown, Truth Nation. Stay locked in right here on Tory Lowe. More of the Tory Lowe Show is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. <laughs> 